Welcome to another Sir James D Tech video. Today I'll be doing the review for the EVGA GTS 450 FTW 1 gigabyte DirectX 11 graphics card. Now I know I went over some of these things in the unboxing, but it's definitely worth repeating. This GTS 450 is the FTW edition. And no, that doesn't stand for Free the Whales. It stands for For the Win. There's the stock 450, there's Super Clocked, and then there's the FTW. Now the clocks on this edition are 920 megahertz for the core, 1840 for the shader, and has an effective memory clock of 4100 megahertz. And there are 192 stream processor cores compared to the stock 450, which has clocks of 822 core, 1645 shader, and 3608 memory, with again the same 192 stream processor cores. As I said, this has one gigabyte of GDDR5 memory in a 128-bit interface. This card is, of course, DirectX 11 compatible and is both NVIDIA 3D Surround ready and SLI ready. The product warranty is for two years limited, which is a little short for me, but I guess you can't get everything you want. And as you can see, compared to the GTX 480, the GTS 450 is a full two inches shorter at eight and a half inches long. However, having the six pin on the end for power will increase your effective length slightly. There are two DVI ports and one HDMI port. However, this is not, as is obvious, the high flow bracket. Now I'll give you a look at the board with all the important personal information of mine redacted, of course. It isn't warped at all. However, an issue I have with it is that it's got this kind of diarrhea brown tint to it. So for me, well, being me, I would have greatly appreciated it just being black. But what can I say? Maybe I'm just unoriginal. And the other thing I don't really care for, and I fully stipulate that this is not EVGA's problem, is that the GTS 450 does not allow for tri-SLI or four-way SLI. Because as you can see right here, there's only a single SLI connector. So what you need for three-way SLI obviously is to have the second one over here. So if you get one of these, obviously don't plan on getting three, unless you plan on using that third strictly for folding purposes. Now I've had more than one person ask me, Exactly what is the point to getting the FTW version as opposed to the super clocked or even the stock or as it's sometimes called the vanilla version? Well, my answer is if you're a mainstream user or somebody that has absolutely no experience with overclocking your graphics cards, then this is probably something you're going to want to look at. Because while there is a $20 difference at $149 between this card and the stock, GTS 450, which is 129. If you're worried at all about possibly not being able to get up to these speeds, or you've got a lack of confidence in your ability to overclock, then that'll probably be money well spent for you. Now, for those of us who are enthusiasts, it's fairly easy to just overclock using a utility such as EVGA's Precision, in which in the new 2.0 version they just came out with, they've actually added the fan profiling. And I'll explain what this is. See how you have the curve going up? You know, when the temperature hits 50 degrees, the fan kicks up to 50, or, you know, upward curve. You can manually switch these around so that, say, when the temperature hits 50, you can make the fan go up to 60%. See, there you go. And you can just keep going right on over if you've got any issues at all with your cooling, that's something they've enabled. However, I will say one thing with precision, that until they place some sort of voltage tuner on here, it pretty much takes second billing to MSI's afterburner. I mean, EVGA does have a GPU voltage tuner, but it's not at all compatible with any of the Fermi cards yet. So that's something I'd really like to see them work on implementing. There is another tool which you can utilize, which is called the EVGA Overclock Scanner. And what it'll do is it'll actually tell you how stable your overclock is. You can do a stress test on it, 
and it'll give you an accurate reading on the number of artifacts you're getting. So that'll tell you, hey, you know, you need to click down your overclock a few tabs. And it's a tremendous time saver, especially for somebody like me, who used to go into Vantage runs just sweating bullets because I was afraid the thing would freeze up on me. And of course, last but not least, are the famous EVGA forums, which contain information on all of these utilities, including many other relevant topics. Now, something else I'd like to mention is this card's folding ability. You can see right now it's chugging through a 10632 work unit, which in case you don't know anything about folding, they make your card run extremely hot and are notorious for low points per day. As a comparison, I have the GTX 480 run in the same exact work unit, and you see it's getting over twice the PPD. However, when I'm able to get one of the advanced method work units onto the GTS 450 FTW, that point per day skyrockets to over 14,000. And I've never, throughout all these benches and even when folding, seen the card get above 70 degrees. The card will only be recognized in your operating system if you have NVIDIA Display Driver 260.63 Beta installed. Otherwise, the 258.96WHQL that was up before that, it won't even recognize the card. You can see I finally got my cathodes installed. Now because the GTS 450 FTW is geared towards more mainstream resolutions, I conducted the following benchmarks in between resolutions 1280 by 1024 and going all the way up to 1920 by 1080. And what I also did after doing those benchmarks is I stuck in an XFX 5750 and then recorded those performance results. Now I use the 5750 because it has extremely similar price range. However, looking back now, and it'll be obvious to you as soon as you see the performance results, Perhaps I should have gone with the 5770 instead. Now I'm about to put on the screen the system specs which I used during the tests, but before I do, I'll say that benchmarks performed are 3D Mark Vantage, Heaven 2.1 in DirectX 11, Resident Evil 5, Mafia 2, and then what I did was I used the GTS 450 as a dedicated physics card. Now in order to achieve this, I took my two GTX 480s and put them in SLI and then ran the Metro 2033 benchmark and also Mafia 2 benchmark again with the physics card disabled, however the physics settings on high and then ran through the benches again, this time with the GTS 450 enabled as a dedicated physics card and again physics setting on high and then recorded the performance difference between those two. So without further ado, Enjoy those performance results.
Now for what I really don't care about with the card. As I mentioned, I don't really like how the PCB is tinted Diary of Brown. The two year warranty is a bit of a disappointment, considering this card is geared towards mainstream users, and typically a mainstream user will keep a card longer than two years. So that really didn't make a lot of sense to me. When the fan ramps up high, it has a distinctive pitched whine, so much so I can hear it over my two GTX 480s, which were also running at 100% at the time. There's again a definite toy-like feel to it. Just squeezing down on the card, there's a definite bend to it, so it's not incredibly secure that way. Based on the performance results, which I was extremely impressed with, even though it's rocking with first run beta drivers. The style and design, which I'm not completely crazy about, but it is palatable. And the value, which at only $15 more, absolutely spanked an XFX 5750, which has far more mature drivers. Add to that that it's an absolutely superb dedicated physics card and requires only one six pin for power. My final verdict for the EVGA GTS 450 FTW graphics card is a solid effort, superb value A. Until next video, ladies and gentlemen, talk later.